arthroscopic rotator cuff repair using SCOE Road Technique. Presented by Stephen Snyder and Peter Fusiakis from the Southern California Orthopedic Institute, or SCOE, Van Nuys, California. SCOE row consists of a single row of triple loaded suture anchors inserted along the medial edge of the rotator cuff footprint. Each anchor has three high strength simple sutures. Multiple bone marrow vents are created in the tuberosity to allow development of a crimson duvet. We'll begin the diagnostic arthroscopy while viewing from the posterior portal. Here we see the biceps tendon is normal, although it does have a capsular band attached to it. The rest of the joint is visualized in a very systematic manner to allow documentation of any other pathology. Finally, the rotator cuff debridement proceeds beginning with the shaver in the posterior portal to debride the undersurface of the footprint to the edge of the articular cartilage. On the bursal side, an electrosurgical tool is used to remove the frayed coracoacromial ligament and expose the acromial bone to allow visualization of this keel-shaped acromial spur. The first part of the decompression consists of taking off the lateral border of the acromion about five millimeters deep. We then see the large spur outlined in the front and we use our high-speed resector from the posterior portal to remove the spur down to and flush with the remainder of the undersurface of the acromia. We likewise debride the undersurface of the clavicle if necessary. By turning the scope around, we see the rotator cuff tear. We've cleaned the edges of the tear with the suction punch, and now we'll create bone marrow vents and anchor holes. This tear is approximately 2.5 centimeters, so we'll use two suture anchors with a space of approximately 1.5 centimeters between the center of each anchor hole. We will insert the first three row triple loaded super anchor near the posterior edge in the pilot hole we've prepared. And you see that each anchor has three sutures. We'll take one of the sutures into the cannula in the front and then choose the appropriate stitching needle and pass it through the bursal side of the rotator cuff in the back through all layers of tissue and carry the suture back through using a suture shuttle relay. We'll grab the other partner suture of this black and white initial stitch and we'll store it in a suture saver on the top of the cuff. Next we'll put in the middle or second suture using a curved suture hook through a healthy bite of rotator cuff tissue approximately a centimeter to a centimeter and a half medial from the edge of the cuff. After the third suture is passed and stored in the suture saver, We'll insert the second suture anchor and pass all three sutures using the appropriate curved suture hooks with shuttles and we'll store the sutures in suture savers. Here you see the suture shuttle coming through. It's retrieved out inside the blue cannula loaded with the suture and carried back through the cuff from bottom to top. We tie the knots such that they sit on the top of the torn rotator cuff and compress the cuff down to the prepared bone in the foot pin. We use the crochet hook to carry the sutures inside and tie them individually. Here's a view of the completed rotator cuff repair. You'll notice the bone marrow vents in the tuberosity and the sutures holding the tendon in a non-tensioned position Rotating the scope, we can see the completed subacromial decompression above, and by turning off the water flow, we can watch the bone marrow as it issues from the bone marrow vents and tracks medially to form a large velvety red clot over the area of the rotator cuff repair, 
This is the so-called Bonnell Crimson Duvet. Peter and I thank you very much for your attention to our video.